Scotland, a wonderful, beautiful country that provides us with scotch, an amazing expression of whiskey that has so much variation and so much history, and honestly, it's just downright delicious. But with six whiskey regions and over 140 distilleries, it can be hard to know how to get into scotch. So today, I'm taking you on a mini tour of each region and giving you some suggestions on what bottles you can have to get into those regions. So let's go to Scotland. Okay, first region, Highland. Now it's the biggest geographically, but not the biggest whiskey producer. Highland is really big, a lot of distilleries stretched out. There's about 30 or so distilleries in Highland. And because of that, there's a lot of different variety of flavors. And I like to describe it as just like a palette for everyone. You get some peat, you can get some fruit, you get some spices, you get some lighter whiskeys with some floral notes. You can get really deep sweetness if they use a sherry cask. All of these things. I think Highland is a very good region to get into Scotch whiskey. You have distilleries like Glenmorangie, Dalmore, Oban, all great. I got Dalmore right here. Glenmorangie might be behind me somewhere, but uh, Glenmorangie makes a lot of whiskey. And because of that, my recommendation to start getting into Highland, Glenmorangie, the Quinta Ruban, it's a 14 year, used two casks, it uses ex bourbon and ruby port barrels. It is a 14 year, really, really good whiskey. It's about 60 bucks. And to get into Highland with a 14 year report finish whiskey, can't ask for much else. It's very chocolatey, it's very velvety. It's a really good intro, I think, to the Highland region. Okay, Highland's neighbor, Speyside, a little bit up above. The biggest whiskey producer in Scotland. Over 50% of scotch comes from Speyside, even though it is smaller. So there's about 50 plus distilleries in Speyside. Um, you have McAllen, Balvany, Aberlour, Glenlivet, a bunch more. Glenlivet, huge. They make a lot of whiskey. Usually with Speyside, they, there's a very common to use sherry casks. So you get a lot of citrus, sweet, fruit, spicy notes, a little bit of peat, depending on your distillery, but not going to be like Isla Peat. We'll get to that later. But just a lot of options with Speyside. I like Speyside. I like Speyside more than Highland, I think because they are more commonly known to use sherry. You know how I like my sherry. But if I'm gonna recommend a bottle, I think I'm gonna go with Aberlour 12. Aberlour is a great distillery. I actually had their Aberlour Abunid for my wedding in 2016, and it's just amazing. That's about, that's about 100 or so dollars, so don't get the Abunid. But the 12 year, it's around like 60, maybe 70 bucks, depending on where you can get your whiskey at, and they have good prices. But it's just a fantastic, fantastic bottle. I love Aberlour, and if you're trying to get into space side, definitely try them out. Okay, Lowland. This is gonna round out the three that I think kind of smell and taste the same, not the same, similar to me. We got Highland, Lowland, Speyside. So Lowland, more known for grain whiskeys and, and blends more than their malts. Um, a lot of blends use Lowland malts because they're so much lighter and sometimes triple distilled that it, they don't overtake the other whiskeys in a blend. So again, with, with Lowlands, you get a lot of like lighter grassy notes, maybe some dried fruit and some spices. There are a few distilleries in Lowland, obviously, but three of them. We got Akintoshin, Gladnock, and Glenkinchy. I haven't had Glenkinchy or Gladnock. I have had Akintoshin. Now, Akintoshin is one of the only distilleries in Scotland that uses triple distill methods. That really smooths out the distillate, kind of brings down the ABV, makes it a nice drinkable experience, but don't get a whole lot of flavors unless they age it for a long time or use a special cask. So, because of that, my recommendation is gonna be Akintoshin 12, and that's a long time to have in a barrel and it's not expensive. It's around 60 to $65, which I think is great for a 12 year. Augandoshin, they make smooth things for you to drink, so you're not gonna have any like bite on this whiskey, so I think it's a good intro. And if you do like the 12, you can go to the Three Wood, you can go backwards to the American Oak, which is an OH statement, but it's pretty good, very, very drinkable. I think it's like $40, so that's also a good intro, but I think the 12 kind of gets a little more robustness to what's already a kind of just like lighter whiskey, so there you go on the uh, Lowland. Okay, Isla, my favorite Scotch region, obviously known for peat and smoke. There's around nine or so distilleries there. Um, obviously, Brookladi, Lafroig, Ardbeg, Lagavulin, Bowmore, just great distilleries all around. It's a very small region, but they make insane whiskey. I love it, it's my favorite. So, 
Just because they are known for peat and smoke doesn't mean the whiskeys you get there are all going to be that way. So you can find stuff that's matured in sherry and cut that through that a little bit. So my recommendation to get into Isla is either Kilholman Mockier Bay, which is around 60 to 70 bucks. Really, it's gonna have less PPMs um, than an Arbeg would or a Laphroaig, but because of that, you get the smoke, and because of the sherry they use, you get a nice cut through there as well. So it's less smoke than our bigger or, uh, or lagerable one as well too. But the sweet sherry there really invites you in. It gives you an authentic smoke experience, but also gives you some nice sweetness to kind of like not scare you away. A little more peat, if you're interested, and sweetness would be our big Anoa, 55 bucks. So it's cheaper than Kilhoman but they have like a, it's like a varied cask. They do Pedro Jimenez Sherry, Virgin Oak, X Bourbon, and a couple of others in this little vat they use for the Anoa. And it's a little more powerful, but because of all the different casks they use and there is Sherry there, there is nice sweetness and it does cut through and it is really nice. So there's Isla for you, love it. Campbelltown, my second favorite region. Used to be called the whiskey capital of the world, but since then there's now only three distilleries. Springbank, Glen Scotia, and Glengyle. Now, Glengyle produces whiskey underneath Kilcarran because the owners of Glengyle also own Springbank. So, to have any con less confusion, they have Kilcarran. So, if you see Kilcarran, it's Glengyle. And Springbank produces Springbank, Hazelbird, and Longrow. So, there you go. Flavor notes of Campbelltown usually have brine, some peat, depending on the distillery, dried fruit, spices, vanilla, toffee, some kind of fruit like citrus zest as well. Depends on the maturation barrel that they use, but Campbelltown is so, so good. One of my favorite bottles I've had to date from Campbelltown is Hazelburn 15 Oloroso Sherry. I actually had it at Jack Rose. Uh, I'll put the video up there if you're interested. That was an insane bottle. It was like a Christmas cookie with some brine. It was just like the perfect blend of everything that Campbelltown can give you. I love it so much. A recommendation for Campbelltown is really hard because the prices are a little higher. But if you see a Springbank, a Long Row, or a Hazelburn that's within your price range, just get it if you're trying to get into it. It's so good. They are very good. There is a Long Row peated for about 60 to 70 bucks, depending on where you are and the prices that you can find in your area. But that's going to be a pretty solid bottle. Long Row is pretty good. And there you go for Campbelltown. Okay, Island Region. Technically not legally a Scotch region as far as the whiskey laws go. It's underneath the Highland umbrella, excluding Isla. But I like to think of Island as its own region because there is so much variation and it's more fun that way for me, right? So you can have distilleries such as Aaron, Jura, or Talisker. So Isle of Aaron, Isle of Jura, and Talisker is on the Isle of Skye. There is so much variation to these whiskeys that I like to think of it as like the flavor profiles between Isla and Highland, everything in between. Like you can get some peat, you can get some fruit, some grains, just all this stuff. The most unique whiskey I've had to date is Jura 10. It is like a mossy, wet, outdoor, like forest walk. It, it is, it's very interesting, but it is also just very good. If I'm gonna recommend a bottle, go find an Aaron. Aaron is a magnificent distillery and I don't think they get enough credit. One of my birthday bottle was Aaron 21, and it's right up here behind me. 21 years at Oloroso Sherry, fantastic. But you can find Aaron Quarter Cask, Aaron 10, Aaron 12. So, so, so good. They are a super solid distillery. If you're trying to get into Island, again, go for Aaron. You're going to like it. Well, that was Scotch Region 101. Hope you learned some stuff. Hope you got some more ideas. Hope you got like a little extra like, oh, I'm going to go try that today. If you like some of these videos, make sure you guys like that. If you want to see some more, obviously every Wednesday I upload Whiskey Wednesday. You can just subscribe, hit the bell too, so you don't miss anything. And I'll see you guys next time.